Cystic Fibrosis Cystic fibrosis affects approximately 30,000 people in the United States, with about 1,000 new cases reported every year. This genetic disease is most well known for its damage to the lungs, causing breathing difficulties and chronic lung infections. But it also affects the liver, the pancreas, and the intestines. Only about 50 years ago, the prognosis for a child born with cystic fibrosis was very grim, with a life expectancy rarely over 10 years. Today, with advances in medical treatment, many cystic fibrosis patients live into their 30s. The symptoms of cystic fibrosis result from a malfunctioning membrane ion channel called the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, or CFTR. In healthy people, the CFTR protein is an integral membrane protein that transports chloride ions out of the cell. In a person who has cystic fibrosis, the gene for the CFTR is mutated and thus the cell manufactures a defective channel protein that typically is not incorporated into the membrane but instead is degraded by the cell. The CFTR requires ATP in order to function making its chloride ion transport a form of active transport. This characteristic puzzled researchers for a long time because the chloride ions are actually flowing down their concentration gradient when transported out of cells. Active transport generally pumps ions against their concentration gradient, but the CFTR presents an exception to this rule. In normal lung tissue, the movement of chloride ion out of the cell maintains a chloride ion rich, negatively charged environment immediately outside of the cell. This is particularly important in the epithelial lining of the respiratory system. Respiratory epithelial cells secrete mucus, which serves to trap dust, bacteria, and other debris. Cilia are hair-like appendages found on certain cells. Cilia on the epithelial cells move mucus and its trapped particles up the airways, away from the lungs, and toward the outside of the body. In order to be effectively moved upward, the mucus cannot be too viscous. Rather, it must have a thin, watery consistency. The transport of chloride ion and the maintenance of an electronegative environment outside of the cell attract positive ions, such as sodium, to the extracellular space. The accumulation of both chloride and sodium ions in the extracellular space creates a solute-rich mucus, which has a low concentration of water molecules. As a result, through osmosis, water moves from the cells and the extracellular matrix into the mucus, causing the mucus to thin out. This is how, in a normal respiratory system, the mucus is kept sufficiently watered down if the CFTR channel is absent, chloride ions are not transported out of the cell in adequate numbers. This prevents them from drawing positive ions. The absence of ions in the secreted mucus results in the lack of normal water concentration gradient. Thus, there is no osmotic pressure pulling water into the mucus. The resulting mucus is thick and sticky, and the ciliated epithelia cannot effectively remove it from the respiratory system. Passageways in the lungs thus become blocked with mucus, along with the debris the mucus carries. Bacterial infections occur more easily because bacterial cells are not effectively carried away from the lungs. Researchers are continually finding ways to battle the symptoms of cystic fibrosis and to increase longevity for those that suffer. Thank you for watching.